are you ready for another episode? Sure, let's go. Alrighty then. Um, I thought that we had a good, uh, some good talks with um, with the um, uh, Myers Bridge test, you know? Uh, yeah. The MBTI personality types, and uh, today we are going to talk about work and our personality types yeah and uh, relations to that and we are also going to talk about our own experiences with that and we can use uh, let's say personality junkies uh, uh, the home page for personality junkie and uh, there's some good sections here with uh, work related stuff uh, career jobs and majors for ENFPs, my type, and your type, INTJ, mm -hmm. as well. And uh, in my own case, um, I feel like in in life, it's been somewhat of a struggle finding my way through life and different careers. I would say. Yeah. Um, since I had a feeling of not fitting in uh, in the more conventional scene, you know, or the more mainstream sort of interest of work. Would you say uh, that you, you got certain jobs and you felt uh, not at home in, in those work situations? Yeah. For example. Yeah, mm. definitely. Mm. And uh, in my earlier years, I, I was so uh, leaned towards pleasing others. I would say, mm -hmm. and uh, really honoring others by perhaps choosing a work that would make uh, someone else proud of me, you know, mm. and uh, that was a really, really a big issue because I one of the first missteps in life was that I told myself that I was going to be a pilot. Right. Like, yeah. Mm. And I wanted to fly airplanes and uh, stuff. Like that, you know. It's a high, um, what you call it, um, like you would look up to a pilot, sort of. Yeah, it's, it's some sort of high uh, status. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah, high status work, job, whatever uh, kind of thing. Or the flight attendants. Yeah, uh, flashy stuff, you know. Running around. Yeah. You're okay. sitting. Yeah, yeah. sorry. <laughs> Go on. No, no, but it, it's true, you know. It's true. <laughs> because it's some sort of that image people get, you know. Mm. Yeah. And. Uh, in this case, I would like make my family proud of uh, going with that line of work, you know. And uh, yeah. would you, uh, sorry, do you, do you think this pilot uh, idea was it uh, only to impress your family, or did you have some sort of other -ish thing into it? Like, do you like the suits and the hat, maybe? Or yeah, uh, I I had a feeling of flying, uh, flying was yeah. a cool thing. Right. And I liked uh, feeling free and uh, go wherever I want to. Mm. And that sort of um, feeling stuck with me when I was a child. And I really liked that a lot. And I I built like model uh, airplanes, you know. Yeah. And uh, different sort of, uh, let's say, Warhammer uh, kind of... Um, Let's say That's a more, game, isn't more, it? yeah, more fantasy-based mm. uh, modeling and uh, mechanics uh, stuff like that. And uh, airplanes was a kind of a big thing back then for me. Oh. I, I had a quite interesting, yeah, I had a interest in that, yeah. um, which was kind of cool, I would say. But in this case, I wanted to make myself proud, and uh, I wanted to make uh, other people proud as well mm. so yeah basically it was a cool thing you know and just uh, as we talk right now i uh, i've noticed uh, you one uh, noticed uh, a scale from uh, a spider it's not a real spider this one it's it's just it, this uh, is the scale uh, actually so it's just uh, being uh, shedding skin yeah, you know, with something can... new. Sure, yeah, yeah, that's beautiful. But uh, I, I really have a acrophobia, is it called? Like I'm the fear of phobia of spiders. So yeah. 
But uh, you're actually dealing with it pretty good, actually. Yeah, my first reaction was just to jump, jump out of <laughs> my seat, and then I, I got the shivers, and then I sort of uh, yeah, feel yeah. a bit un un uneasy. So. Yeah, it's yeah. nice because like spider, uh, spider things are like my one of my more animal totems as well. Right. Yeah. Sorry, I, I brushed it away. You can. Nope. It's just a, <laughs> it's just a nice sign, I would say, for for this. Uh, uh, for this talk actually. Yeah, that's good. Good uh, yeah. when it comes to numerology and synchronizations as well I've had that for like the last couple of three days mm -hmm. So I've seen a lot of one 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 sequences and two 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 combinations and uh, uh, it, It's a manifestation of uh, Intuition and change like and the number one is it? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. a more wake-up call for uh, for sh change and shedding skin, you know, as, as the this sign. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So uh, that's how I feel right now. Like mm. I've been shedding skin the uh, last couple of days. Mm. So that's cool to see that. Right. So should we jump back to the work stuff? Yeah, uh, you were bit. talking about uh, why you wanted to be a pilot, I think. Oh, yeah, the... pilot thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, let's see here. Where was I? Uh, so the basic thing was that I chose a um, career that wasn't suitable for me whatsoever. Uh, I had a, because the career uh, had freedom, let's say, mm -hmm. with the flying and stuff, which I loved, mm -hmm. and I could go. I had an like a preoccupied thought of uh, I can go wherever I want to if I become a pilot. No, you're very. It's very strict, very technological, and very, <laughs> you know. You can't schedule choose, based yeah, yeah you can't choose where you're gonna fly yeah either. exactly exactly <laughs> so well if i mean if you're uh you could be different kind of pilot of course yeah exactly yeah. in uh, my late uh, like later years i uh, would definitely see myself as a hobby pilot sure and then you go uh, like, wherever eh? yeah yeah exactly mm. um so that was a wrong step when i was a child i would say uh, and i felt really bad because i started uh, school you know uh, pilot school Mm, for uh, uh, to become like preparing to become a pilot and everything oh, like that, cool. but I, mm -hmm. I jumped off, mm -hmm. so I, I didn't want to continue. How, uh, how did you? How do you start becoming a pilot? What, what steps would you take? So first to step, uh, let's say um, the high school and everything in um, like younger years would be uh, different sort of lines of uh, preparing. Uh, math, uh, yeah. physics, and technological base skills for that, you know. Yeah, yeah. And then you jump on a pilot school afterwards, and you're pretty much good to go, you know. Right. Um, in this case, I jumped off like after uh, almost a year, I would say. In the university yeah, level. Yeah, ex yeah exactly. Mm -hmm. So I realized that I would really, in in my core would like to become a creator you know of some sort mm. um, and in this case it was animation that was uh, talking to me um, everything everything since studio ghibli and uh, disney for instance inspired me a lot with the animations you know uh, the body language and like different sort of heightened senses and feelings of different scenarios in life you know and basically creating a, an illusion of life um, which is a great book by the way as well the illusion of life mm -hmm. yeah what is it about it's about it's written from uh, the old animation masters uh, from uh, Disney oh, yeah. uh, which is uh, great in many ways uh, of uh, applying different animation principles or talking about life and the principle of movement and everything like that and applying that to work uh, pure animation uh, mm. and it's it's great it's many good great examples and uh, how things move and why they move the way they do you know mm -hmm. yeah um so i went with animation uh and uh it was a <laughs> it was back then it was a wake up call for me because i i told myself that uh, it's a good time it's a good thing to really listen to yourself you know 
mm. uh, that I came back to something, you know, after after going astray for a while, I came to, back to that uh, with creation, basically that feeling of creating things. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And it was a great experience, I would say. Mm. So animation work was the way to go. Uh, I'm still working uh, with animation today. Sure, uh, yeah, yeah. You, now you're working with games, uh, <coughs> yeah, computer games. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and uh, I, I, I enjoy that cre uh, creativity of uh, that side of things, but it also comes with more an administrative uh, things, which is really bad for me as well. But uh, the good uh, overweights uh, the bad, yeah, so to speak. Yeah. So, yeah, that's a little like head start for me as an ENFP. What what have happened in life so far? Um, Could um, you connect uh, like both the pilot and the uh, the animator work with your personality and sort of explain a little how, what, what, why it would work or why it doesn't work? Like uh, uh, yeah, uh, in my own case, I feel like before we actually read about it. Like yeah. on, on Myers Bridge's uh, site and personality junkie, perhaps I, I'm just going to talk about my own experiences and uh, without even knowing what uh, what they say on the homepage. Ah, uh, yeah, we so keep, save it's it, going to be save interesting. It, we yeah. save it for later. Yeah, so, so now we're just uh, sort of going through our careers. Yeah, basically. exactly. Yeah, okay. uh, so it's going to be interesting to compare, like if it's uh, true or if it's like yeah. uh, if it if it matches. So. Makes sense. Um, yeah. Sure. Mm. Yeah. I felt like having animation, um, why it works for me till this day. Uh, it's uh, basically I feel I use my my analytical side of feelings uh, to be able to understand different characters and emotions, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, applying that to to my animations. You know. To, yeah, yeah. to make it feel real, you know. Sure. Mm. That's uh, a big asset for you uh, in this line of work. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm. So that's that's one thing that uh, that I feel like that's working. And uh, animation is a great thing because you, you need to... It's a hard thing as well, but you need to be able to think about many different things at the same time, you know. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, Having that, I feel like I can uh, make many different sort of move sets and uh, body languages and express different sort of different characteristics and feelings or movements based upon different creatures, animals or uh, uh, human bipeds, you know. Mm. Um, uh, so I've, I've animated a lot of different things and different characters and creatures in life and I, I feel like it's so it's beyond the ordinary I would say it's something that isn't usual I would say um, in what sense like it's a uh, for uh, it's an unusual job you mean yeah like, it, for, it but really not is not everybody does yeah that's yeah. true I guess yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's also a thing where I feel like I can I can be like an actor at the same time because I have to act out my own animations mm -hmm. and record myself sometimes to create different references, you know? Oh, yeah. But I don't have to stand uh, in front of a public uh, almost, even though I enjoy sort of like real life acting as well sometimes, but it's more like I can feel safe in my own environment and uh, do that, you know? Yeah. Uh, and record myself and use that for my work, um, which is so it's a little bit of acting, a little bit of that creating side of life and uh, um, sort of applying sort of feelings and uh, and uh, new ways of ideas and thinking. Um, so it's a, a great, great creating pot of stirring many different things, you know, mm. and it's uh, a big thing is change as well. Uh, because with that line of work, uh, I feel like animation comes with so many different changes to it. 
because someday you work with an animal, you know, you have a more animalistic sort of instinctual feelings to that. Mm -hmm. Um and that you have to express as well. Every every day is different, sort of. Yeah. Almost yeah. Exactly. Yeah, and yeah. That's that's a good thing for you, I guess. Mm, mm. Yeah. Some sort of change, and uh, it's not that much of a routine. <clears throat> sure. Mm. Yeah. Um, and uh, if the work is on my own terms as well, I feel like I do much more better. Um, yeah. Uh, which is great. Um, the mm. other side is. Uh, the administrative work in uh, animations with animation lists and different sort of tasks and prioritizations, you know, and like that. That is a headache for me. That is really bad. <laughs> mm. So it, it, it kind of stresses me out, you know. Uh, and uh, let's say the, the boss says that now it's not the time to work for, from the creative side. You have to wait, working on more animations, and you have to reorganize everything, mm. <laughs> and so we can have a new sort of uh, style, or uh, let's say a whole new pipeline of uh, structure. Mm -hmm. So these animations, uh, let's say everything that has to do with walk animations should be in one scene, you know, and everything that has to do with uh, crouching has to be there. So now I have to take everything and like reorganize everything, and that really stresses me out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. But but it's like um, you get paid for this, and uh, <laughs> yeah. you you can yeah. can you somehow feel like okay, I gotta do this boring sh shit because I, <laughs> uh, I at least I get money. So yeah, uh, it's really. It's does really... it help to think in that way or? Uh, yeah, it's it. it it's so bad for me because it gets to a point where uh, it's not even worth the money. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> for me, it's, it's like so bad. Living hell. <laughs> yeah, it is. Uh, so it's like I can sometimes take a step back and say, like, I can like pay you back because I don't want to work with this. Yeah, just <laughs> like, hire someone else. Yeah, yeah, you know, exactly. For, for that part. Yeah, you know? yeah. <laughs> Luckily, it hasn't come to that time. Like, uh, uh, but I, I sort of like. Um, try to push through you know mm -hmm. or uh, like in this instance like uh, i have taken like three days off yeah. from the project because i i'm so stressed out about like thinking new structures you know and uh, limiting myself of thinking a certain way and i can't uh, go beyond that border you know mm -hmm. it's just like this and that's the way it is nothing more and it's so easy when i realize it because i don't have to push i don't have to put my creative energy into it i don't have to think about new ways or play around with things you know but playing around with things and new ideas and creating and coming up with different solutions to different things it's what stimulates me mm -hmm. and having things locked all the time um like a dual sort of structure all the time and it's going to be routine and nothing changes, you know, mm. that is extremely energy taking from me. It takes a lot of energy from me. Mm. I don't know why, but it just it always been like that, you know, yeah, it's not stimulating whatsoever. It's just like, okay, this is the structure. Fine. I'll just do this. And it's so easy for some people. <laughs> sure yeah, yeah that's, that's and, where the personality kicks in right yeah yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and i i realize that it's so easy but it's so hard for me yeah, yeah it's so weird mm -hmm. but yeah you yeah. really should have some pay someone to do that part <clears throat> i mean or the boss should yeah exactly sort of, uh, yeah exactly it's, it's possible <laughs> yeah exactly definitely but mm. the thing is because it's my animations i have to i have the responsibility yeah, to to create a structure for that as well yeah yeah it's yeah. not so easy to yeah to get yeah. someone else yeah because if i take another person's structure i'm going to be confused where to put my creations and animations so yeah. i have to understand that <laughs> along with the programmer you know mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it's a, a communication between programmer and anim animator here so yeah mm -hmm. but that said, I can still say that I am 
very much more happily off with the animation side of life, uh, even though it also has its own routines and daily grind. It sure has, yeah. Um, so it's uh, yeah, it has a double side for yeah. you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Sure. It's hard to, to picture a, a job where everything would be brand new and uh, inventive every day. Yeah. But I suppose there is, but uh, mm. yeah, they're sort of rare. Huh? Yeah, exactly. Mm. And uh, I'm more of a, I felt, always felt like I'm more like an initiator in life. Uh, mm. Starting projects, like starting like <laughs> 50 projects, not finishing one. <laughs> I, I think you mentioned in another podcast that uh, you, you were, you, I think you could work <clears throat> as a sort of an, um, like, I don't know, inspirator or like oh, yeah. if you worked in a school mm. and the kids came to you and said, uh, I don't know what I'm going to be. And you, you just get, get going on them and, mm. <laughs> yeah, exactly. and help them to, to get where they want. Yeah. Yeah. That should be. Yeah. I get a lot of satisfaction from uh, from my work as a music teacher. Yeah. Really. Uh, yeah, it's a bit of sort of the same, I, I can imagine. Yeah, yeah. And that's where the more social side of uh, my personality comes in, I feel. Because I gain so much energy from talking uh, and uh, inspiring and motivating kids, you know. And uh, seeing people grow. Mm -hmm. Um from my inspiration is really a kick, you know, it's really a fun, positive energy kick to me. Uh, it gives so much more than, uh, than the pay, uh, I would say. Mm -hmm. um, it's really satisfying. Uh, but even though I get a really good paid for being a music teacher these days, it's, uh, it's a great motivation as well. But mainly when it comes to that side of work, I do it for, for, for the fun of it. You know, mm -hmm. yeah, that's sort of amazing to me uh, because I'm an educated teacher, but it's so wrong for me to be a teacher. <laughs> so I'm, I'm just like, yeah, total opposite. Yeah, <laughs> I I only study to be a teacher because of the money. <laughs> uh, so totally different. Thing. Yeah, yeah, and you you're doing the work because you you love it more yeah. more or less. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. the social side of talking with. Uh, enthusiastic child of like wanted to learn the drums let's say and uh, just bashing away and like teaching different rhythms and uh, s such things you know like it, it's uh, wonderful I feel uh, yeah and uh, it's always days where it's so much change that I that I can't even handle it you know mm -hmm. so it's like some girls over there wants to do this, you know, some guys over there wants to do another thing, you know, and they are in the loop of making and creating their own sort of music projects these days. And uh, I'm just a mediator between all this, you know, and trying to help each group uh, or individual of achieving their own goal, you know. Are they going to re record it? Uh, yeah, some people want to record it. Some people want to sing uh, or make a cover and sing for the whole group and that's fine mm -hmm. and some people are more no 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 i don't want to <laughs> sing for my group i just want to show you you know yeah yeah and that's fine as well so i listen to the the introverted side and the extroverted i i feel there yeah yeah that's good i mean uh, I, I always felt when i w went to school that everybody had to perform and uh, they, yeah. did, they didn't take respect to the introverted yeah, people yeah. at all so yeah, that was yeah. bad for me <laughs> yeah but i i yeah. really do and i say like i i see the stress in their eyes you know if mm -hmm. I, when i ask them if they want to perform in front of class and they're like no 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 <laughs> like, yeah you can yeah. see it easily yeah, yeah they yeah. just want to run away you know mm. um but uh, in this case i'm just gonna say like they can record uh, themselves and just basically hand it to me and I will listen to 30 seconds you know and like try to fit in you know with the rhythm and you know with the timing mm -hmm. uh, the voice scales and everything like that it's uh, it's quite beautiful you know so I think they do it their own way and I honor uh, their own way you know yeah it's also a different like now it's so easy to record but when when we went to school there were Actually, no, even iPhones or anything. Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> yeah, recording so, was a big thing then. But, yeah, uh, yeah. 
recording uh, is fine today like we have very strict rules in like uh, when it comes to mobile phones as well in school you know mm -hmm. like they don't uh, it's not allowed to take pictures of other students or like record <clears throat> and stuff like that you know sure. because of the um, it can create fights real fast and it, it can really be a sort of a shaming uh, scenario as well mm -hmm. it's many bad things happen because of that uh, but uh, i realized but the thing is here we use the phones for you know the class and it's uh, totally okay to do so like because i noticed many students asking me about uh no oh, we can't use the phones to record yes it's allowed today because you're doing it for a project <laughs> and mm. they're like yay <laughs> awesome <laughs> so yeah right so then you talked about all your works basically or did you miss anything mm. yeah there's so much more to it but i i wanted to keep it light like uh, just these three different sort of scenarios mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. music teacher animator or creative director in this case and also the pilot thing that didn't fit me <laughs> yeah. but, but it fits me in a, a more hobby way i would say yeah not a professional state yeah sure you will be a private pilot later yeah, maybe. in life yeah. yeah yeah i think so just you know cruise yeah. around it's good cool go go out in there like uh, the jungle or yeah some far off place yeah it would be awesome yeah. <laughs> yeah indiana jones style <laughs> yeah yeah are you curious to what the page say? Uh, mm -hmm, yeah, me? let's have a look. Yeah. Okay. So we will see if you uh, if you find these characteristics in uh, the personality ENFP. It says here that uh, this is written by Dr. A. J. Drent, mm -hmm. and um, it says that ENFPs are intelligent, creative, versatile, good with people and can have a knack for entrepreneurship and leadership. The ENFP wants to find a career where he or she is passionate about. Settling for a mediocre career choice seems unacceptable to this personality type. Uh, m money is rarely the prime motivator for ENFPs, who often downplay the importance of materialistic comfort or possessions. So we write rightfully downplay it sometimes um so yeah most uh would uh rather uh, live frugally i don't know what that word means but not sure no uh cheaply can you yeah maybe yeah maybe uh most would rather live frugally doing what they love than get rich performing unsatisfying work right yeah, yeah. so that's the first section here mm-hmm Sure. Well, that part where you it's unacceptable to you to do that what you don't like, it seems uh, very true. <laughs> yeah. 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 Can't, can't, uh... yeah things I really do not like, I, I have a really hard time doing. Yeah. 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 It, especially like if it's really downward, like depressing, you know, realizing that there's no way out and I have to do something that's not my cup of tea whatsoever. Oof, it's uh, it can be a really soul killer for for me. I feel mm. yeah. And uh, it says here on a more student level, or when it comes to college, mm -hmm. uh, the educational times for ENFPs may struggle to identify a college major that can satisfy their broad interest mm. and versatile abilities. Oh, there's one for you. Sorry. It's uh, liberal arts, I think they have now in the universities. Oh, wow. That would where be... you study astronomy, astrology, Latin, Greek, uh, and uh, very advanced biology and uh, oh, everything. So cool. <laughs> yeah, I think. Yeah. That would really fit me, I feel. It would fit, fit you very well, I think. Yeah. yeah. Now, just just hearing it, uh, what you if what you said, that that was like, oof, I got goosebumps. <laughs> good, <laughs> <laughs> good ones. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Cool. So, let's see here. Um, it says here that our wide range cu uh, curiosity stems, or the core from that, is thanks to our dominant personality uh, function, uh, that is extroverted intuition. Mm -hmm. So, 
that's because we like to explore a variety of options and ideas before making any permanent decision about a career path. And these are outside of you instead of in inward looking. Mm, mm, right. mm, yeah. Exactly. Mm. So I want to try out many different things, you know. Yeah. And that's what I've done in life. Yeah. And it's like trying out many different things in life, I felt, and also like uh, dis discerning or disregarding them, you know, like, uh, no, I don't want to do that. No, I don't want to do that. And I've, I've been there so many times now, so I'm, I'm just starting to narrow down things that works. <laughs> you sure, <know>? yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. In, instead of like some people would, would think sort of, yeah, I, would I want to make much money and then I will study on uh, the, what you call it, handles, mm. uh, like uh, yeah. economy, and then I... I'll be rich. Yeah. <laughs> That's not your thing at, at all. It's yeah, yeah, like, exactly. It has to be meaningful to you. Yeah. Yeah. So it also says here that we often, um, uh, <laughs> basically what I said, <laughs> uh, often uh, require plenty of experimentation and life experience <laughs> sure, yeah. in order to discover the deepest passion. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, true, true. Uh, uh, so, despite the challenge of uh, zeroing uh, in on a right career, job or college major, ENFPs can find satisfaction in a number of different career areas. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, like school and uh, creative side of animation, uh, that really got to me. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, certainly. Some var variation there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it says here that uh, realistic side of life or more conventional uh, sides that could fit ENFPs here is landscape and architecture, mm -hmm. uh, forestry parks, recreation, or uh, being uh, or becoming a park ranger. Ah, yeah. I like that. Yeah. Park range. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it really fits, I would say. Sure. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to that, because I enjoy nature so much as well. So, parks and forests and all everything that has to do with earth and, like, landscape and, like, taking care of it. it really cool. Yeah, I, would say. I think so. Yeah. Why, why does it say realistic, you think? Uh, realistic, because it's more... Uh, objective based it's real it's like you work with trees you know it's like uh, hands-on work you know mm -hmm. yeah in a uh, instead of uh, some uh, what is Imag abstract, abstract. Yeah, abstract imaginative work you know mm -hmm. yeah uh, and then we have invis investigative work mm -hmm. for ENFPs so in the sector of humanities oh liberal arts <laughs> <laughs> so, <yeah>. There it is. <laughs> yep, there yeah. it is. Liberal arts researcher, uh, research assistant, or scholar. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, <laughs> you, you knew before uh, we read. Yeah. <laughs> so, social sciences, uh, sociology, psychology, anthropology, political science, history, or geography. Yeah. Yeah. I could think about. Yeah. Yeah. And mm -hmm. also, it says that ENFPs are prone to becoming uh, physicians, doctors of uh, medicine and psychiatry, or college uh, professors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when it comes to those sides as well. So yeah, and definitely. I, I can see myself becoming a more professor or like really enthusiastic uh, uh, professor. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to to be good with people and enjoy people to, yeah to be a professor or teaching professor yeah yeah and uh, that's that's what you can do yeah very, very well so yeah, i would like that uh, uh liberal arts professor yeah that would be amazing like a renaissance man knowing everything about everything <laughs> <laughs> that's cool <laughs> and then we have the artistic sides of enfps mm. uh, a lot of enfps are prone to becoming um actors mm -hmm. Uh, comedy writers or comedians, uh, musicians, uh, graphic website UI, uh, UI uh, 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 interface designers, uh, creative media professionals, uh, photographers, 
uh, worship art directors. Yeah, uh, creative director here. Here. <laughs> what do you say? Worship. Uh, worship arts. What's that? Like the uh, spiritual uh, worship? Spiritual leaders uh, worship directing. Art. Yeah, exactly. Hmm. And uh, uh, directing those ways. Uh, guidance or guides, let's say. Like spiritual guides. Spiritual or... guides, sure. Yeah. Therapist, maybe. Yeah. Or... yeah. It has shamanic to, yeah. yeah shamanic ways i would say and it has to do a lot with uh, people and psychology and i like that yeah mm -hmm. a writer novelists bloggers editors yeah definitely yeah i can see myself uh, because i write a lot as well mm -hmm. playwright dramatist screenwriter yeah sure self and uh, indie publishing okay yeah and when it comes to social works that requires more social skills, it's uh, one at the top here is as teachers. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> sure. Yeah. Uh, priests, pastors, ministers, that kind of thing. Life coach. Mm -hmm. Well, interesting. I've been thinking about that sometimes. Um, there hasn't, hasn't been one occupation yet that you don't like, right? Uh, nope. Uh, everything so far it's been uh, i've been through it i've been touching uh, like first and second base on many things here <laughs> yeah uh, uh, let's see um, after life coach is as trainer or personal trainer mm -hmm. uh, that would be in the gym basically yeah. Work workouts yeah, yeah. Uh, definitely i like to inspire people and like push people you know yeah forward um yeah translator languages mm, yeah yeah, because I'm curious about like uh, the Asian language, uh, Chinese, Vietnamese, and Japanese, and those sides of life, Indian uh, as well, India mm. as well. Okay. And but all of them have a different writing system than we have. So yeah, exactly. It's... So it's curious about the that system, like yeah. Yeah, I also would like to learn like I Indian language would be cool. Yeah, mm. and then it says mediator or diplomat or peace worker. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then it's more like psychologist, health, clinical counseling, organizational uh, counseling, like that. And I would say yes in my case, but no. Uh, I'm, nor, I'm not into the. Like, personally, this isn't uh, like the conventional side of psychiatry or like clinical work today is not uh, suitable for me, I would say. Mm -hmm. so that's a personal thing I, I i'm more for the spiritual healing path I yeah because psychology is more uh, scientific in a way isn't yeah it? like yeah. a bit dry and uh yeah boring yeah, <laughs> yeah. but but then you mentioned um, anthropology and uh, social psychology uh, mm -hmm. is more uh, for me i would sure. say sure and uh when you said diplomat i, I thought that's spot on yeah yeah i think because that that would you would do very, very well yeah, because you're very uh, into making situation work out in a, in a good way. I feel. Do yeah. You, do you agree? Yeah. Yeah. Mediator mm -hmm. or diplomat between two sides, like understanding all sides. You know. Yeah. Seeing the whole picture. Yeah. Yeah. And actually explaining another part side for the other side to understand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So definitely. Uh, but uh, I can see myself becoming a, like a case of shooting the messenger. <laughs> How do you mean? Uh, this, uh, different sides will be pissed off, <laughs> you know. And I would shoot you, you yeah, mean. <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> yeah. uh, so, counselor, social worker, yeah, I would say, yeah. Uh, enterprising, entrepreneurship, journalist, reporter, news anchor, Radio host, podcaster, ah, <laughs> yeah. motivational speaker, and uh, marketing. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> so, typically, it says here that conventional careers are typically avoided by ENFPs. Yes. As I said many times over. Conventional, no. No, it's not a big thing for me. Um, so, yeah. Artistry, social, investigative stuff, and social psychology or spiritual path huge thing so mm -hmm. i feel like these things are spot on for me yeah uh, definitely so only the psychology part you didn't like 
Yeah, the clinical the kind clinical of clinical yeah, psychology. conventional clinical. Uh, you have these symptoms, take this medis- medicine. That's it. You know, no, no, I'm not into that. Yeah. Um, I'm more like uh, investigating like the root cause of a problem, really talking things through. You know, yeah. like uh, the hard way. You know, mm. yeah, and not escaping or uh, like doing uh, like. Like overindulging, doing, overdoing other things, like yes, yeah, basically getting to the root problem of something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Interesting. Yeah, mm. that was a little bit of the ENFP, my personality type, and work, and how yeah. how those things have been turning out in life. Yeah. Um. But honestly, like if we get down and dirty here, I would say that there's many, many days there I feel like, ugh, like uh, depressed and really, <sighs> I feel the setbacks in life. I feel like I haven't come so far in life. Yeah. Like I, I doubt myself some, so many times and yeah. uh, I feel like there's no path that really fits, you know? Would it be important for you to to have a direction you feel, or are you okay with being a searcher in this way? Or, uh... Yeah, I'm very much uh, fine with being a searcher, but being searching too much, I I can be depressed because I don't find. You know, mm-hmm. it's like um, if I'm not finding, it's it's really hard. But a good thing, as you said, having a goal is that some of during some of the hard times or uh, rough days i'm i can be calmed down by someone else reminding me of uh, the goal or like reassuring or uh, motivating me or inspiring me like re-acknowledge like acknowledge that like you do have good uh, you know intentions or you do have good uh, let's say uh, a great path here, you know, like continue, mm. you know, like, like that. Yeah, uh, I see. Yeah. That that gives me energy back. I would say, yeah. Mm. So you're you're re- reassured that you're on the right path to. Oh to yeah, yeah. Someone else, yeah. yeah. If if someone else is reassuring me about things in life, uh, that's a huge thing. I would say, like someone listen listens and reassure. Like these sites are really good. Like and. You are working. You are on a path that's really big, and you're you're making a change. You know, mm-hmm. that's that's great. I would feel, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And do uh, do you ever feel like you? It would be nice not to to have to work at all, like to to uh, total freedom and uh, yeah. money is not an issue. You know. Yeah. Yes and no. I yeah. would say mm-hmm. um, because I, I I can see myself becoming really stressed out if I have so much money that i don't know what to do with it you know and so much freedom and so much freedom as well or free time yeah or free time i would uh, definitely get into a bad loop Uh, i think of overindulging in many bad habits i think yeah and uh, be careless i think so work would keep you on your toes more or less so that you don't uh, fall down into yeah, and my em- uh, empathic side it would be uh, unbalanced, I feel, if I had too much money or, like, being careless, you know? Maybe with it. Yeah. careless with the money, yeah. Yeah, mm. yeah. I think I would, uh, like, uh, maybe that's that's a fear. I'm, I'm like, describing a fear. More you like haven't it. been in that situation, so, so you can, can yeah, say. Yeah, yeah, but I could imagine, like, if I if I'm... If I become depressed, you know, mm-hmm. and really down, uh, I, I, those bad things could occur. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. Um, but a good side of it, I would be a more like a empathic helper, you know, and like a, a diplomat, as you would say. I would mm-hmm. go out and like really help different sides in life, you know. Yeah, yeah. Because <clears throat> you, uh, you need some sort of a meaning. Yeah. And you can find meaning in work, but... Yeah. I mean, what is work anyway? It's it's like, is it because you get paid, then it's work? I mean, I do a lot of things that I don't get paid for, but I consider them maybe work or mm. like improving the world or whatever. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's a tricky question, eh? but uh, 
but the, the core is to do something that's meaningful i think like uh that's a big source of happiness yeah yeah mm. yeah right Mm, so it was interesting. I, I didn't know um, the whole story for you, like pilot. I, I had no idea. That was interesting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I hope you will become a pilot, <clears throat> private pilot, sort yeah. of, flying me around <laughs> as well sometimes. <laughs> it would be one heck of a ride, I would say. Yeah, yeah. loops and everything. Yeah, <laughs> super speedy uh, bat, uh, Batman uh, flight. Yeah. Mm. That would, would be quite epic, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If 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 I would uh, get like, uh, let's say, uh, mm, pilot lessons uh, from you, uh, birthday present, I would take them any day. Okay. <laughs> cool. I remember that. <laughs> yeah. I would take it. Uh, like you become a hobby uh, pilot. Yeah. 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 Definitely. That would be fun. But mistakes in uh, in the air uh, would be uh, more disastrous than mistakes on ground. I would feel. <laughs> yeah, I, I, the parachutes are helpful, but uh, yeah, I don't know if the yeah if you can be. But but they say like it's it's less dangerous to fly than to go by car. I don't know. Oh yeah. So yeah, maybe it's not not that bad. Yeah, there's not so many airplanes up up there. You know. <laughs> now it's the the level of vehicles. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, I guess so. The density, you know. Mm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm. So maybe let's talk about my my side of the yeah yeah the maybe story or yeah. a break. Yeah, maybe we can actually start uh, a bit uh, before we take a break. We can yeah. actually touch uh, some things. Yeah, if you don't mind, I, I, I for me I can go go a while further. Yeah, sure. Right. So uh, I am I am TJ. Yep. Yeah. And uh, work for me is uh, it's also been uh, really tricky for me. Like um, um, I have done I have studied quite a lot. I'm I mean nine years of art studies. And now I have like a master degree from the university in, in fine arts, and uh, I've been working as an artist, and uh, also I had a lot of like uh, what do you call jobs uh, on a low level sort of. Uh, so I've been working uh, in elderly care quite a bit, uh, helping out uh, um, old people. Um. And, um, well, let's take it from the beginning, maybe. Um, I did actually enjoy working with old people quite a bit because they are, uh, I'm, I'm not very good at social inter interactions, but uh, old people is working very well because they are, they're not so, so quick and intense. They are sort of, often sort of, uh, low key or whatever you yeah, can say yeah. or more like laid back and relaxed as well uh, yeah they're not so pushy you know they're more like uh, yeah relaxed yeah. they live their life and uh, they have a lot of experience and uh, yeah it's funny that you said experience because I had a feeling of like they're uh, like this like fountain of wisdom you know as well yeah, so, yeah. yeah. many old people have, have a lot of a wis living experience wisdom sort of yeah and uh, but not all of course uh, <laughs> Uh, but still it's good it's a very low pay for for me and pay in, is uh, is more important and i i do actually enjoy bargaining with the boss for money sort of when you get, get employed it's sort of a, a competition for me and i get really comp competitive you know so <laughs> so i like that um <laughs> And uh, and that that was very frustrating with this elderly care because uh, since it's uh, low paid and they basically they don't cut you any slack you can you can't really b bargain anything they just say you just get this or you don't work mm, here mm, so okay yeah 
So, uh, so finally I didn't do that anymore because I felt, well, I do feel I have a great purpose in life so somehow and I want to realize it and I don't, don't want to have a, a job that seems trivial somehow. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. or holds you back basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, and I don't mean to say that working with elderly care is trivial, it's a very important job but uh, but uh, for me, for me personally, I have visions, you know, I want to yeah. realize yeah. In, in other areas, sort of. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So we, we talk about our own experiences and uh, like own personal sides. It's it's nothing that you're you're bashing a, another career or anything like that. It's just uh, like in your case, it's not fitting. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I don't I just I don't want to make sure that people yeah get get that as well yeah yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. because oftentimes you it's so easy you just talk down other people's jobs you know and yeah it's, exactly it's not fair actually because yeah. it's all they're all important in uh, well not not all but uh, most of them <laughs> in, the, in, in, in the grand in the grand scale of thing uh, skin uh, things i would say yeah yeah mm. but it's also interesting to think what jobs could you just remove and the world wouldn't be a worse place <laughs> like oh, like yeah. the the people who are spe just moving money around speculating with money or wh whatever mm. it's not important mm. it doesn't make any difference what yeah. i can see mm. they're just greedy yeah but uh, anyway um so it, the, my artist career it, it didn't take off like money wise so so i didn't make much money on that uh, so then I, I studied to become a teacher, which I am now, a, a diplom, diplomed, what do you call it, certified teacher, maybe? Oh, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and I, uh, I te teached one uh, semester in, uh, in uh, Borås, in a secondary school, I think it's called, gymnasium. Okay. And uh, very nice students, very well behaved, uh, but... Uh, I just freaked out but because I got so stressed being in the center of attention, you know, and uh, having to to sort of talk in front of this crowd of, of young people. Yeah, yeah. But why do you think you get stressed out for being center of attention? Well, it's... Uh, what, happens? what happens in that case? Um, I, I think I get very self-aware, like uh, this sort of loop, like what whatever I'm doing, I look at myself and s analyze it. Mm. And I'm, I'm really s like scared what, what they are thinking, I guess. Uh, they're, mm. they're judging or... Oh, okay. Uh, there's a lot of fear and uh, anxiety. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So, so obviously that didn't work. I mean, I had a terrible troubles with my stomach and I, uh, I couldn't relax in the evenings and when I get home so I, mm. I had to drink like alcohol or I didn't have the tools I have now so yeah so that was sort of a destructive thing yeah yeah mm. Mm. in my own case I, I've noticed I've been through like having uh, almost anxiety attacks from some uh, from some days of like um, reviewing things or like talking in front of big crowds you know mm -hmm. uh, i had a really severe case of like i like i started uh, stumbling i felt like in front of class mm -hmm. and i couldn't like do anything and i became like as you said like really self-aware and i saw that people were like laughing at me and oh it was so bad you know so i just just stepped off and just sat down and I said like no I can't do it like it's it's just ugh like it doesn't work you know sounds like um, like like my situation <laughs> yeah yeah mm -hmm. but I've been through that so many times now that I've done it so many times that it's it, it just something happened that uh, right now when I stand in front of a crowd or talking I just reassure myself that I know what I'm talking about and then it's like 
it's fine. It's I, I don't care as much anymore. And it's so much more uh, like it, it's better for me talking in front of like a school class, I would say, than uh, to, let's say, 40 or 50 doctors like. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're on a like a what do you call it? a meeting with uh, all this. Uh... Medical doctors, maybe, and yeah. you have to lecture them. To yeah, them. <laughs> yeah, that would be horrifying. <laughs> yeah, just sitting with their arms crossed, yeah. like looking a bit skeptical. Yeah, mm, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like trying to teach fifty skeptics, that would be. <laughs> 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 right. Yeah. So basically, you you would say that uh, for you, it uh, it has helped with experience. It's uh, yeah, it's yeah. gotten better for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I thought about that, because I like when you describe those things, uh, mm. I've been through that as well. It's horrifying. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's, I suppose it's it's a very base uh, human reaction to yeah you're exposing yourself to to strangers more yeah. or less or yeah and uh, yeah for me it's just very very strong and uh, like the first day in in uh, in this school when I worked I, I actually uh, was almost fainted at, when I stood up and should talk I, yeah. I was like getting this dizzy eyes yeah. and uh, yeah it was. Uh, miserable yeah so i don't know i think um, if i go to some sort of therapy and and at the same time work in school maybe i could could get past this but it's a really long road i think like, yeah it's yeah uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's funny like i read somewhere if you if you want an intj away from your kitchen just put a stranger in your kitchen yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's true. <laughs> that's true. Uh, that's, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's like <laughs> it's very annoying, sort of like uh, it's uh, your own space and uh, yeah. Yeah. Imagine um, like waking up, like uh, you're going to the toilet, and then there just like sits like four or five strangers in your kitchen, <laughs> like you're drinking coffee. <laughs> yeah, and you have to relate to all of them, so you feel. Like, uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's tough. <laughs> it's tough. I don't know. It feels like you don't have control. For me, like, uh, I, I like, yeah. I like people, but I don't want to meet them in controlled environments and sort of not yeah. too many. And uh, yeah. uh, it's like you would uh, would uh, come to me like, uh, Christopher, why is there strangers in our kitchen? <laughs> like, why? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, take them out. <laughs> yes, right, right away. Yeah. <laughs> It's been like that, you know, when I lived in uh, uh, communes, like collectively, and uh, <laughs> yeah, and there was one place uh, where the the guy who owned the house, he, he there was like a, a whole bunch of French bicyclists. Have I told you about this? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I haven't heard of it. This is gonna be good, guys. This is gonna be awesome. Uh, so, so there was a bunch of Frenchmen. They were riding bikes through Europe. To pro protest something, whatever. Okay. Sort of a bit hippie like. Yeah. Bicyclists and uh, and the guy owning the house, he had told them, like, yeah, no problem, you can live uh, in our yard, you know, uh, yeah. with your tents and whatever. Yeah. And, uh, and he told us that, like, they don't have to be in the house, you know, they live out there, but. Yeah, sure enough, when they they came to stay there, they more and more moved into the house, you know, and took over the kitchen and everything. And uh, <laughs> and I was so frustrated by this, you know. And and they could tell, of course. So so they were talking like, oh, he don't like us, you know. They could they could tell that <laughs> I had this aura of uh, yeah. negativity. So yeah, that, yeah, yeah. So that was tough. <laughs> uh, but 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 it helps, I suppose. If if I just say like what it's like for me that yeah so so they don't so they don't think that i hate them it's yeah. it's just that i feel threatened maybe <laughs> yeah did you give them the like the intj death stare like yeah well you know it's basically don't to talk to them and yeah just <laughs> walking around doing my business <laughs> okay yeah. Hmm. No, I don't stand stare angry at people. That that's not my thing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, anyway, yeah, that, that was the school. That was the school, and uh, talked a little bit about the stressful situation there. Like it stressed you out, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
So I had to quit. Yeah. Yeah. And what happened then? Then I've been unemployed for a very long time. Yeah. And uh, sort of figuring out what I want to do. And um, yeah, I haven't uh, really done any employment work. I, I've been um, I've been getting into this business with the hemp now, of course. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. And, Interesting. And I think this is the the par path for me. Some sort of um, some sort of. Um, project leader or um, sort of managing this company or process or whatever it's going to be. Yeah. Um, I, f I feel very enthusiastic about it and I work with it a lot and it's not even work because it's so fun. So <laughs> yeah, it's very stimulating. Um, and I met this, these old farmers here, you know, they are like 60, 70 years old and uh, they have grown hemp for a long time and uh, we have a really good relationship. So, so it's very delightful, uh, and uh, it's like money-wise, we have to we have to like take loans or get s financing somehow. But you know, it w it will work out if if it if it's supposed to work out. So, mm. Mm. so that's where I'm now, and um, I I would say like it's so important for me to have this sort of higher purpose like the hemp it has the, this uh, the making the world better sort of feel to it like it's it's true that uh, it will improve uh, the world you can get rid of bad products and have uh, sustainable products and um, <clears throat> so so that makes it meaningful and um, Mm. Yeah. Well, you basically f um, think that you more more or less like found a path that uh, works better for you these days, right? Yeah. Yeah. Even uh, well, the hemp the hemp thing is really good. I would like to pair it up with some sort of uh, spiritual work where I help others, like yeah. like uh, we did last time uh, with the. Uh, emotional clearing yeah, and making yeah. sounds and yeah i feel i have a knack for it you know i feel like i feel like it's com comes natural to me mm. i feel like talking to people makes me nervous but uh, if if doing spiritual things together it really relaxes me yeah S strangely enough <laughs> yeah it works yeah basically yeah so it's like uh, you feel uh, much more comfortable in a one-on-one -on -one situation than uh, talking in front of 20 people yeah it's better it's better but yeah. still even uh, even talking one-to-one -one, uh, is, is more stressful than doing a spiritual exercise together mm. Mm. And, and i think that's strange because i for me it's i would think most people are a bit uncomfortable with spiritual work maybe like it's a strange situation and and they would feel like that that's the 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 tough part that's my thinking i don't know if it's true but hmm. uh, i think it's really a tricky part because it, it is a vulnerable state of being you know mm -hmm. uh, as you said uh, just the same thing of like i think the paranoia or fear of what other people think about you or what other people can do with you when you're uh, laying down or relaxing whatever you know mm -hmm. just a fear that is uh, very much uncalled for i think it's uh, <clears throat> it's not a proper way of thinking i would say in such a scenario because like spiritual uh spiritually and like practices like that is supposed to be very calm you know so i think after a while you learn you learn to relax more and it's going to be more a natural experience i think yeah, yeah and uh but our country is very secular and uh and many people are not used to doing spiritual work and uh so just that it's uh, an unusual Oh yeah, definitely. Thing like that makes yeah, you yeah, it's so bad. Uh, makes you sort of tense and makes you maybe feel mm. uh, like 
you get a lot of thoughts about what is this stupid nonsense, you know, like yeah, this, because, uh, <laughs> like prejudices. And, yeah, most uh, of the people here have a rationalizational brain, you know, mm -hmm. a really sort of rationalization of the mind and not so much uh, of the heart, even rationalizes uh, the heart, even, you know, mm -hmm. um, trying to figure out and like uh, coming up with excuses or things like that. But it, it has gotten to a point where people are so stressed out that they can't even relax, you know? Mm -hmm. So they're always in a sort of defensive mode because of lack of sleep, lack of food or nutrition or whatever it might be. You know, it can be fears, anxiety, depression. Um, and society today, it's an over, over stimulation of uh, both images too much sound, too much of everything. Mm -hmm. It's never a sort of a calm situation out there, you know. Mm. Mm. That's something that I've noticed, like uh, just watching uh, commercial today. I just like, ugh, I have to go away, you know. It's like flashing images, like buff, buff, buff over the, to this take and this take and here and there, you know. It's like jumping back and forth like crazy and it's like uh, making my head turn like instantly and like I become really tired and like really frustrated, you know. Yeah, it's yeah. so, so important to have a reference point outside, like outside all of that. So yeah. of do, go doing a retreat for a week, you know, with, yeah. with some spiritual guys and uh, yeah, yeah, and no computer, no phone, you know, just yeah, relating to the physical world and to yeah. your inner self. Yeah, mm. if I can't make a retreat today, uh, let's say to nature, or I don't have uh, like let's say the energy for. Uh, like taking the car, you know, and just driving out to nature, you know, like mm. I don't feel like it. I'm more like in a, let's say, isolated state of being. Then I pretty much just put the project away for some time and then I start to play some games instead and just relax that way, mm. you know. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Or in my case, sometimes I, I get unstimulated mm. from work. So I have to stimulate me with some fast-paced games instead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or we will have our our techniques to yeah. recharge. Mm, yeah, that wouldn't work for me at all. Can, yeah. I can say. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But for you, it, it can. Yeah, work. yeah, it works yeah. because I get uh, more stimulated or hyped up. You know, basically playing mm -hmm. some games with some friends, talking strategy, you know, teamworking and like problem solving and trying to win a game, you know. Okay, yeah, I can yeah. see that. Yeah. Sure, yeah. I, I would be just stressed out, you know. Yeah. For, yeah. Me, for me, it's just shutting everything down and uh, yeah, I, I get very unhappy and uh, miserable if I, yeah. if I get stimulated all the time, you know. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. But it's like, imagine if you're so unstimulated and like some so dull and boring, like, mm -hmm. Uh, then the game is something for me that really stimulates me again, like, like charge, like uh, get me hyped up or sure, excited yeah. again. Yeah, yeah. Like there's some fun things to life, you know. Yeah, I can see the yeah. how why that would work. Yeah, sure. Yeah. And it's like we're playing some action games these days, like uh, grenades flying, you know, uh, like smoke nades here, trying to hide, reloading weapons, you know, sharing. Uh, <coughs> Sharing things between the teams, you know, driving a car, holding positions, you know, and everything like that. So we try to organize and team up, you know, and trying to take out other teams and becoming survivors, you know, mm -hmm. basically. Uh, so it's um, a pretty, pretty fun experience. It's um, right now, uh, it's a, uh, the, the genre is called the Battle Royale, I feel. I think it's called. Yeah. There's a movie called Battle Royale, I think. Yeah. They're on an island, they have to kill each other or something. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So Okay, that's, so that's based on the yeah, movie, basically. Yeah, yeah, mm. exactly. So that's the gameplay. So you parachute uh, naked, basically, and you find items. Mm. And you teamwork together to, do, to become the lost survivors. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 
Well, I, I wanted to say also about work that that I'm I'm I asked you if you could, wouldn't mind not working, and for me, I I uh, I would really like not having to work for money, like uh, yeah, because uh, I think we should have basic income and uh, sort yeah. of explore our inner longings and our projects you know yeah we are so held back many of us in society because we have to to make a living yeah true yeah and i think something that would work for you yuan is uh uh one having some sort of solution uh where you can find yourself being the person of having a passive income like mm. all the time like having some sort of like basic income you said yeah but also as some sort of a uh, work related uh, low key uh, work that you have put a lot of thought and ideas into and uh, perhaps you work your butt off for years maybe but then it starts to change so it becomes more of a passive income mm -hmm. you know? like so, writing a book podcasts uh, whatever yeah yeah mm -hmm. or like mm, let's say solutions w with uh, with uh, other sites in life like mm -hmm. that uh, that could work as well i yeah. think your your type is one of those uh, code code crackers like your and uh, decoding life like mm -hmm. yeah <coughs> because i i want to uh, go explore like travel a lot and i want to i don't want to be stuck in one place too no much. exactly yeah and uh, now since i don't make money anyway really so then, yeah. then i'm really stuck i feel yeah frustrated about that so yeah but I also know you that you didn't, you don't want to get, uh, you don't want to be stuck, right? No, I don't want to be yeah. stuck. You you don't want to be staggered, like mm. uh, you also long for. Uh, you said to me that you're longing to travel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I want to have a sort of a small base uh, where I can go out from, sort of, and then go explore and uh, mm. and then come back and. Uh, it's also like for me it's important to have this little space where i can retreat to and uh, uh so so, <clears throat> so traveling for me is more like i go to a place i like to stay for a while you know and make a space for myself and uh, and uh, also meeting people in my like uh, the way i like it sort of yeah yeah so i don't like to travel too much uh but just throwing myself out and being totally yeah submerged in experiences mm. <laughs> it sounds really exciting because you get that sort of harmony and balance between work and uh, you can cut off work and just travel to uh, another culture a country and uh, just uh, work on the spiritual side mm. more likely sure well it's it's good it's beautiful to meet other people other country cultures and yeah and just sort of see how stupid our culture are in certain ways <laughs> like uh, you meet other people it's insane like <laughs> so many things we do here is just nuts yeah yeah <laughs> compared to what country you would say yeah well i've been in vietnam for a long time and uh they they know what's what's up you know and what's down and uh, they they really spend a lot of time with like their family and their friends and uh, they value each other more mm. i feel yeah it's a war warmer sort of place in that way, and mm. uh, and the food is much better. They put so much effort into their food and the products, like to make the food. And like here in Sweden, we just buy uh, whatever shit they have in the <laughs> store, and uh, you know it's uh, like very expensive as well. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, yeah. Well, they and they have their bad things as well, obviously. But uh, like, they value the basic things in life, and here, here we're more like interested in this sort of superficial top things, like I don't know, mobile phones and the technology, mm. and yeah, and like we don't even know how to survive if if the power is cut, sort of. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> but they know, like in Vietnam, you know, they have been through really horrible wars and stuff. Yeah, Pretty definitely. Yeah recently so they, they they know yeah they're more in touch with reality you know yeah <clears throat> also I've, mostly i've been to poor poorer places you know where people are they have these survival skills they have the the wisdom of 
the everyday life sort of yeah that's that really makes me relax in some way and yeah i mean i mean i feel like, like sweden here we're getting more and more egoistic by the day sort of and like in traffic everybody i saw the other day on the news how uh the the guy driving the, the what do you call it the firefighter car he was complaining like peep, peep. they they were going to a fire and and uh, the the people driving on the road they were trying to pass pass him when he was speeding because they didn't want to get stuck in traffic you know so mm -hmm. <laughs> and they and they were driving in the bus lane so he couldn't get get where he wanted you know so they just think about themselves uh, yeah <laughs> isn't it uh, frustrating for you as an intj to see those things and uh, you notice that it's like feeling of hopelessness that ah oh, th these people will never change <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah it makes you know it mostly makes me f long to go to other places because i i am very fortunate i feel that i have seen other cultures you yeah, know, and, yeah. and i know that this is not the only option sort of yeah so I'm, it's not so much that I get frustrated. I feel like, fuck this, you know, <laughs> I'm going somewhere else. Yeah, yeah. Sort of. <laughs> yeah. Because uh, escapism, escapism or escapism is a big thing for you, right? Yeah, well, uh, that, that is a double thing. I mean, it it's could be a put down word, escapism. It's, okay. It can be like... Uh, I saw you, it you as, don't a, as be... a good thing. <laughs> yeah, it can be both, yeah. I suppose. Yeah. Well, you mean it in a good way, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, the the bad way would be like you don't want to deal with your problems and your issues. You just want to escape. Oh yeah, yeah. But, but the other part would be like, like, uh, well, I don't know. How would you describe the positive side of it? Yeah, basically realizing that you're in sort of a bad habit loop and you manage it to find the escape route. Mm -hmm. You know, or in this case, being in a stressful scenario mm -hmm. and something that is really unhealthy and uh, destructive and you find the you find a quick way to escape that you know mm. ah yeah i see yeah uh, yeah you do, you, it's so basically that you don't you don't satisfy yourself with staying in mm. negative yeah surrounding so yeah situations so, yeah you, because uh, types like that personality types that has uh, some sort of connection to this they can find uh, uh, like the exit uh, quite fast you know mm -hmm. yeah which is good sure and then in my younger <clears throat> years I, I i had this as well but then i i was more like fearful of going going you know mm. so i grown more self self secure and uh, now so a bit there's a bit of regret for me like why didn't i take more chances even earlier sort of you know and, yeah uh, yeah exactly and to like uh, yeah now i have to struggle just to raise the money so i can get going again <laughs> but, yeah uh, well hemp is fun and will make me rich i hope <laughs> rich enough to travel at least <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's the thing are you curious to listen to some of what the sides say here um, yeah the sides. Hear. sure mm. so this is also written by dr aj drent and uh, it's about uh, INTJ careers and jobs and majors. And I will just read up uh, a few things about it. It's a really long, long, long page, but it's, uh, we can take some basics. Mm -hmm. So basically, uh, the INTJ personality types seeks a career that utilizes his or her unique gifts and abilities. Settling for a mediocre or mundane work is not an option for this type. Uh, so, yeah, fortunately, INTJ career seekers have a number of good career choices available to them. They may take up work as uh, scientists, engineers, scholars, computer system analysts, uh, attorneys, or architects, etc. Uh, INTJs tend to enjoy the role of change agent or reformer. Uh, their introverted intuition, and I is adept at formulating grand visions while uh, their extroverted thinking te serves up plans for implementation of that uh, grand vision mm. 
their drive for change and ref uh, reform may uh, find an like outlet in uh, any number of fields from politics to business to education and so on uh, and it says here that ITJs can generally uh, better tolerate uh, like structured work environments sure um, 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 like no uh, opposite of you basically is, is it? oh yeah yeah you definitely like structure <laughs> yeah yeah Oh, no, I agree. I, I, Structures. I, yeah, I can see it. Yeah, for me it's good. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Their willingness to function as part of a larger system opens up uh, vocational doors that seem uh, forever closed uh, to some other uh, career types. Mm -hmm. uh, due to their ability to work with an, uh, within the TE uh, TE system, the extroverted thinking, to implement ideas and uh, visions, etc. INTJs can carve out a niche for themselves in a variety of the settings, capitalizing on their analytical, strategic, and visionary powers and skills. In organizations where promotions are based on, let's say, competence rather than on uh, politics or popularity, INTJs can quickly make their way to the top, if they wish to. Uh, they can be easily frustrated by situations where organizational politics or red tape uh, stifle uh, opportunities, uh, stifle opportunities for real change and advancement. So in this case, basically, it means that like uh, ITGs get really frustrated where um, organizational politics and like hinder or stops uh, uh, change, like for the better. Yeah, that's very true. <clears throat> yeah. I also can see that part, you know, where uh, if you want to rise in a structure, for me, I never rise if it's like the politics or the relations. Yeah. I, yeah. I only rise because of my uh, competence, if, if if ever. Like. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it's not easy because society is mo very much built around connections, <laughs> politics, you know, isn't yeah. it? So, so yeah. that's what I like about building my own uh, hemp s s uh, organization, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Then I, uh, it's only not so much politics. Yeah. Mm. So let's see here. Uh, we're gonna skip a bit more and jump down to the different career uh, tips here. Mm. Uh, uh, so let's see here. When it comes to uh, realistic careers, uh, more like on hand work. It's actually uh, some INTJs uh, percentage uh, find they're working with uh, computer repairs. Yeah, I, I wouldn't have thought about that. It <coughs> sounds totally uninteresting to me. Yeah. yeah. And uh, investigative careers here is actuary, biochemistry, biology, neuroscience, um, computer science, system analysts, informatics, programmers, um, engineering, uh, software, civil, mechanical, electrical engineering, urban planning, uh, like... Yeah, urban yeah. planning, and none of the before, but uh, urban yeah. planning sounds good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And the uh, chemist, mathemat mathematicians, astronomers, and uh, oh, physicists. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, applied sciences and uh, technology yeah that's a sort of interesting yeah yeah environmental science as well yeah yeah big thing mm -hmm. yeah <coughs> and uh, lawyers uh, attorneys nah, well, no well uh, uh, sort of yeah. i have a really strong sense of justice you know yeah justice uh, is uh, yeah. i think it's a big thing yeah, yeah. Uh, financial planner and like economy uh, uh, economics uh, planner I'm and stuff. So bad at that stuff. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Let's see here. Philosopher. Yeah, sure. Yeah. That's a big thing. Yeah. Uh, health, medical sciences, uh, public health, uh, and uh, I would say that you're you're more prone towards the spiritual side of the health thing and healing, more likely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah. yeah. Mm, a researcher mm. in many different fields here, like like sociology, psychology, uh, 
political science, history, anthropology, etc., etc., <laughs> like research in those areas. Yeah, yeah, I suppose that's that's true. I I can find most academics disciplines interesting. I think. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Research and science in those uh, areas. Yeah. yeah, and and to find my own angle, you know, and not and going a bit on the fringe, sort of like on, on the edge yeah. of where where knowledge is. Like. Yeah. That, that's really stimulating. Yeah. 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 Uh, and then it says like uh, information, uh, library sciences, mm-hmm. even. <clears throat> um, and then we have uh, critics, uh, cr- uh, critical theory, and stuff like that. <laughs> if it uh, what what I think it is, then I don't like it. Uh, but uh, yeah, I I I think maybe it could be like uh, post structuralism, which is also like feminism, which is a discipline I totally disagree with. Yeah, that's Cri- uh, criti- uh, critics and critical theory. Critical theory, I think, yeah. is sort Theorists. of theorists. Yeah, yeah, it's like that. Yeah. Well, I am. I like to be critical, but you know, certain uh, philosophical systems I don't agree with. So. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So maybe critic uh, criticizing those instead. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, uh, so, so that's it. Yeah. So there, there you go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so uh, uh, non-fiction writer, as well. A non-fiction writer. Okay. Would it be like David Attenborough maybe writing mm. a script for natural show or whatever? Mm, maybe. Mm. Physicians, uh, doctors, neurologists, pathologist. What is that? Pathologist. That has something to do with disease, like pathology. Yeah. yeah. And internal medicine. Mm-hmm. Like. Oh, I don't like to dig around in there. Nope. Inside humans. Nope. But internal medicine, like researching in in the areas of uh, medicine like it's more like you take uh, <coughs> take something inside the body and see what happens yeah yeah, maybe. yeah. sounds good yeah. <laughs> can work yeah. <laughs> and then we have artistic careers here graphic and web designers journalists and uh, editors uh, bloggers like architects and stuff like that with the artistical research and work yeah like as you uh, w- uh, you were talking about the feet projects you know yeah yeah well, I, I read that before and I noticed they did. They don't mention uh, like ar- artists in the way of sort of painting or, uh, you know, the way I've been an artist yeah. before. They yeah. don't mention it. No. So, and we discussed that earlier that uh, that yeah. wasn't really my path. Yeah. Also, it's very interesting because I when I studied art, I was so, so one single minded on being an artist. And, mm. and everybody told me like you should become uh, work with the advertisement and stuff that may brings you money and I, I just laughed at that you know mm. but, uh, but then now in later years I realized maybe there was I could have been happy with that uh, yeah and that's sort of what I do in a way now also yeah so that's interesting yeah, yeah. Mm. and social careers uh, psychologist more like one-to-one situation like talking through uh, or even like spiritual healer shamanic ways as well yeah, yeah. all of that yeah it's nice yeah deeply meaningful um, oh yeah uh, enterprising careers like management uh, upper level executive managers of different uh, areas or different fields in life mm-hmm. yeah uh, consultant even mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, stuff that has something to do with you, like you know what you're talking about and you you like spread your knowledge. Yeah, that's very mm. yeah. satisfying, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. yeah. Or even uh, like when it comes to conventional uh, careers, uh, paralegal or uh, legal assistant. Like uh, when it comes to uh, like um, like healing or like even uh, like uh, laws of uh, like health. Uh, loss and assisting in those areas or searching for those things yeah i'm not sure what what that is even yeah mm. but oh yeah definitely some big big uh, big things here sure uh, there were uh, like more for you you uh, felt like everything was right and for me it was like 50 50 maybe yeah yeah some some of it i don't re- it's the te- more technical things, maybe like computers. I'm not so in- much into. Yeah, yeah, M- but uh, you're more on the nature side of things. I felt. Yeah. Yeah, I am, but but this hemp business, on the other hand, is also sort of uh, you have machines, so mm. it's uh, mm. it's um, but more nature, I would say, mm. generally. Uh, yeah. 
Mm. Yeah. Mm. So that's it. It's perhaps uh, time for break now. Yeah. Time for a break, guys. So we'll be right back. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. All right. We're just back for a short, short while again. And uh, we had been talking about uh, work-related stuff and uh, MBTI, Myers-Bridge personality type. Yeah. Um, so both from an INTJ and ENFP perspective. And we talked a little bit about our own experiences and so. Mm -hmm. um, but right now I wanted to ask you about the INTJ side and... You see the red line that you have walked through life, you know, yeah. and now you're up with this project, with the hemp project and everything like that. Do you feel like you hit the spot there? You feel like this is a thing for you? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, it's uh, probably, well, it feels meaningful when I'm doing it. Yeah. And um, and so so I guess I'm in the right place. Uh, still, still, it's... Uh, it's nothing is certain, right? So it's more like go, going on an, an adventure. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, but uh, hopefully there will be uh, good progress coming our way. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Uh, so sure, it's 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 good. I mean, I I feel I wouldn't go back to being an employed again, maybe necessarily. If if I can uh, work as uh, self-employed uh, person i think that would be good yeah for me that would be good for me the the i haven't done it so much yeah before uh, because uh, that that's the same thing with me you know uh, the work happens on your own terms basically you don't have to like feel stressed that you have to uh, accomplish something on a short-term basis or uh, y you don't feel as locked down per se mm -hmm. um i think so it's a good thing for you if you uh, if it's on your own terms. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, and uh, also, do you set the speed yourself? So exactly. It can be frustrating sometimes if you're held back uh, yeah. too much by other people. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Exactly. So what happens next? I'm not sure if you can talk so much about it, but like, what is the like focus? What do you feel like? Uh, uh, doing next here like uh, you started off something interesting on uh, like a group you said or something yeah yeah i started a facebook group about uh, uh, our hemp business uh, yeah because I, I i have been told that it's it's good to be generous with your process when you start a company and to let other people know that you are doing this thing yeah and, uh, so then they can come in and uh, you can help each other and uh, together you push push the project along mm, mm. so that's what i'm I d i've been doing uh right now and uh, i'm very curious to see mm. the reaction from people and yeah. uh, and you also you have to to work with this feeling of uh you, your fear of people stealing your ideas and mm, mm. it's uh, something you have to come over i think and well, sometimes they do steal your ideas, I guess, but <laughs> but uh, still, it's uh, with the hemp, for example, it's so much work to steal the idea, so so people won't bother because of that, I think. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's so hard. Like, yeah, it's a lot of work. Well, I suppose if you're very rich, you could do whatever you like, but then again. You, if you would be very rich, you would invest in something, right? You yeah. wouldn't do it yourself. You would, yeah. and that's what uh, one thing you could hope for actually that that someone reads about this on the internet and they think, oh, this is a really good idea. I want to support, and I have so much money. So yeah, let's put it there, and then I will get the investment back later. Yeah, exactly. Mm, like yeah. risk capital and stuff like that. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. But what is the group called now? Um, it's called, it has a really long name, um, Project Swedish Hemp Restoration. All right. 
Yeah, it goes around, so you could also say a Swedish hemp restoration product. Mm. Project. Oh yeah, <laughs> nice. It makes a full circle. Yeah, yeah. The, the logo is uh, is a circle. Uh, so, so, so I see it's not it's not like my company uh, Facebook page because I don't have a, a company yet for this. Yeah. And also, it's it is a truly a, a project that I feel uh, in, at this stage. Yeah, but a project that you definitely have uh, passion for. Oh, very yeah. much. Yeah. yeah, and I really enjoy uh, drive. Uh, you know, maintaining these Facebook and Instagram pages. Uh, yeah, I'm doing that for a lot of groups yeah. already. So yeah, uh, experience and yeah, yeah. With my artistic background, it's very fun to work with images and text and moving images yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> yeah and uh, i made the the logo in photoshop you know it was just watching youtube so uh, how, how do you make this and uh, quite enjoyable i'd say yeah yeah, yeah it's good yeah mm. Mm. <clears throat> so and uh, f uh if you turn to you uh yeah. and uh, the future uh, developments what uh, would you Seeing your crystal ball of uh, <laughs> <laughs> future endeavors, mm. uh, like during like in the last couple of days, it's been uh, kind of rough and like uh, stressful. I would say with a project and everything like that, restructuring things. You know, as I said. Mm. Um, but in the future, I feel like uh, it come. It, it will naturally come a time where where I have to do it, you know? So I just have to teach myself new things as well as I go. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, so the restructuring, you mean, you have to do it. Yeah, and I have to learn uh, some new technical uh, things in both uh, program-wise and uh, skill-wise as well mm -hmm. in order to accomplish the next step. So I have to take a couple of study days and then... Uh, do some testing and then see if it works, you know, so I can upkeep that sort of structure or pipeline when it comes to the animations. Uh, but if we achieve that, it, it will be so easy for uh, me and the programmer, like in the future, mm -hmm. because we can easily know what, what we talk about, what sort of uh, line or structure of animations we are talking about, like oh, this animation goes here because this has to do with the walks and this goes here, you know. So we, we will, I think it will take a lot of time right now, but we will save the time in the future. Yeah. Yeah. That's so. in the same way you, uh, you, I don't know much about games, but you can build, a, you call it a game engine, right? Which, exactly. Which you can then apply all sorts of things too, right? True. True. So it's sort of that sort of thinking, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Mm. So right now we have our game engine. Uh, we have our main like uh, chief programmer uh, doing the engine, and he's doing everything from scratch. You know, and it's uh, quite beautiful. And I'm really like glad and honored to to work with uh, uh, these guys. It's like uh, old uh, colleagues as well. Uh, from the game industry, so it's uh, really interesting to work with um, and uh, they called me like uh, some s some time now uh, ago and uh, Wanted uh, wanted me in the project and uh, I jumped out of course. I just have to it's so fun. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, I get uh, I get a uh, good compensation, you know, like uh, I feel like great pay uh, for the work done and um uh, it's like having a creative side of me as well going nuts and they give me the main like responsibility of the animations and the the creative pipeline there you know as a creative director i i know i can uh, have a say in the project as well mm -hmm. and make uh, impact you know yeah it matters okay. what you yeah yeah think. yeah yeah my voice uh, is heard and it matters and i i feel like uh, if i have people around me that respect my uh my voice and like uh, respect what i have to say you know that that is uh weights heavy you know so it, yeah. it's really interesting yeah it makes you feel uh, uh, good working with the project then yeah uh, yeah mm. so i will continue with the game project um and i will also mm, 
and continue with the uh, with the school as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, for some time now, I will. Uh, my goal here is to stack up a bit of money so uh, we can actually start doing these uh, travels together. Yeah. So it's gonna be fun. I feel. Yeah, I'm yeah. happy we have that too, to yeah. look forward to. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Because that is something that is going to be fun for the podcast, but also like uh, our own experiences in life as well, to, to challenge ourselves as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's uh, very much like developing for, for the per personality and for uh, spiritually and everything. Yeah, exactly. Mm. And it's so great to have, uh, have you, Johan, in life to, to you know, toss ideas and uh, ball everything back and forth you know and like yeah, yeah. Uh, stimulates uh, uh, the mind you know yeah uh, good, good. And, and likewise for, yeah yes yeah. yeah. and for me it's like uh, stimulating uh, the heart you know emotional wise and like uh, both the spiritual side and everything is pretty much uh, connected uh, so mm. yeah yeah I think if we, uh, when we go traveling, it will be really, really cool to to stay at places, you know, and just go into whatever is there. And uh, is it nature? Is it culture? You know, it's, I feel uh, it will be very rewarding and interesting. <laughs> yeah, amazing in yeah. many ways. Um, yeah. Because uh, what uh, what you find hard, perhaps sometimes, maybe I have a more easier way of perhaps engaging with people. You know. Yeah the social side of things sure and but, also yeah. pushing along so we don't get stuck anywhere but uh, sort of yeah uh, exactly yeah. yeah like oh maybe look here or this over here you know and uh, mm -hmm. if i find something uh, like struggling with the structure or schedule of things perhaps or like oh mm -hmm. like maybe you can be there to remind you know like it's uh, yeah it's a great thing yeah, yeah there's a lot of uh, overlapping uh, um, in our personalities that uh, yeah will yeah balance and yeah not only overlapping i feel it's like a pure genuine compatibility like yeah. it, it works together like it seems goes hand in hand uh, very much sure like yeah. what one's uh, what is one's weakness is the other's strength mm -hmm. i feel so it's really cool so yeah it really overlaps uh, really well mm -hmm. yeah. and also it's a uh, it's a really big test for a relationship to traveling together so it's uh yeah exactly it's, uh, yeah I, i'm very certain that it will work out well yeah uh, we've known each other for quite some time now yeah, as well yeah and like naturally developing uh, to travel together so like travel partners it's i think it's going to be great to experience the world different cultures food and oh, big thing yeah. <laughs> <laughs> some great food uh, yes. Yeah, and uh, spiritual practices. I'm very curious about uh, Indian spiritual practices. Uh, yoga. Mm -hmm. um, the more fiery sides of yoga. Mm -hmm. um, Ashtanga yoga, or even uh, like the, the the sun greetings that they had mm -hmm. as well. Yeah, there's a lot of of these things going on. Uh, yeah. Mm. So yeah. I think that's uh, it for this time of the podcast, right? Yeah, let's uh, uh, wrap it up. Yeah, sort of. Hmm. And uh, we look forward to uh, to continue the podcast in the future and like develop more things, more fun, derpy things to talk about. Yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, see you guys later. I would say. Yeah. See you and uh, take care. Yeah. Take care. Bye. Bye.